And welcome inside the Backstage Pass. It is May the 9th. And I guess that old expression, April showers should bring May flowers. Uh, Texas, I'm sure just like Nashville, is not the case over the last two or three days. We've had some thunderstorms come through and all this rain coming from somewhere as we live off the coast. But we're here. we got a signal, so we're good to go here on the Backstage Pass, uh, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com uh, and presented by our friends over at Bangtail Whiskey. We love to drink here on the show. Drink responsibly, but do it with our friends at Bangtail.com. Our total wine and specs in Nashville. Also, easyliquor.com, good way to get that bottle uh, sent directly to your door. Also, our friends over at Honky Tonk, Texas, will be out there May 19th with Randall King. And, of course, out there again with our friends, go by the tasting room at Alvin, Texas, gentlebin.com. The vodka, the gin, the bourbon is fantastic. And check out our friend Ricky Ford at uh, Minute Maid Park out there, too, as well. They've got the Gentle Bend Bar just outside the Crawford boxes there at the Houston Astros uh, Ballpark, Minute Maid Park in downtown Houston, appreciate all the work that our sponsors do, too. And if you haven't heard, the show here now is a 2023 nominee uh, for Best Radio Podcast Media Internet Radio out there. The Josie Music Awards uh, will be there October 22nd, uh, taking part in all the festivities. And I tell you what, a young lady, she's catching the eyes out there right now. She's an emerging artist, too, as well, and uh, independent. Uh, she's done label, and she's based out of Nashville, too. I love her originally from uh, Corona, California. It's just got a natural talent for this industry and too far gone. Uh, displays that out there. Ashley Ryan to the show. Uh, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you, Brandon? It's good. It's good. Now that I got all the fluff out of the way, I get to actually ask you a bunch <laughs> of questions here on the backstage pass, but that's what sponsors pay for. Everybody knows without the sponsors, you can't uh, can't do a show here too. So tell me your story because you mentioned about six years. You've been there now in Music mm-hmm. City. I love it there. Fantastic town. So many great people work there. As the last two years, we've gotten to do the CRS, mm-hmm. uh, the conferences up there. Uh, California, talk about just the love of, of country music and kind of what led you to go uh, east to Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah, so you already mentioned I'm originally from Corona, California, mm-hmm. born and raised. Um, I was actually raised more on rock and roll music, which is hilarious to me. But we started listening to a little bit of Brooks and Dunn and some Carrie Underwood, Miranda Lambert, that kind of stuff. So I had a little bit of country in me. But I would say when I was about 16, that's when I I knew I started to fall in love with songwriting. I've always been a writer Mm -hmm. at heart. Um, But songwriting definitely became something that was very strong of a passion of mine. I started writing my own songs and then I started singing them because I had no one else to sing them. And I just it clicked to me. I started playing in front of my family and they're like, hey, you can actually kind of sing. So (laughs) I kind of ran with it. I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I decided that I was going to use college as my excuse to get to Nashville. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I went to Belmont University for my sophomore year, actually. Um, So I moved there back in 2017. And so, yeah, I was majoring in music business at college. Mm -hmm. And then I I dropped out. And I'm still a dropout today. But ever since then, I'm I'm doing country music. (laughs) And it's what I love. And it's amazing. (laughs) Let's talk about your sound because you've got a, a very, really cool vibe. And I, I kind of dug it with this latest mm-hmm. single we're going to have you perform today called uh, Too Far Gone. And you've displayed this in so many songs you've put out over the years with the, the singles and things like this. But it's like a really cool modern twist, that little country sound. It's very authentic. I love it. you got a little bit of a drawl in you too, which is there. You can really tell. And this was kind of first discovered, I guess, in, in a way with uh, one of Keith Urban's uh, tour release kind of parties out there, mm-hmm. his date parties, tour release date parties. Uh, that's a pretty cool story in itself. Talk about this and I guess the the, the backing you had from and the support from Keith Urban. Yeah, that was definitely a God thing because mm-hmm. that was just crazy. But it was actually when I was still a student at Belmont, I had some friends that were going to his pop-up release show for his Graffiti U Tour mm-hmm. announcement date. And so he was playing at the Exit Inn at the time. And my friends were going, they're like, we got to get in line. There's people already like wrapped around the building. And I think I had a class and I ended up skipping class to go, (laughs) which I'm so glad I did, (laughs) respectfully. But um, we got in somehow and um, he just started playing some songs and then he he got on the mic and he was like, hey, we're going to have someone come up from the crowd to um, announce the tour day. He had like this big like poster thing you were supposed to open up and it had Mm -hmm. the tour day on there. And he called my name and I have no idea. Like to this day, I still have no idea why he (laughs) called my name. But he said, um, like, this girl from Belmont University. So again, I don't even, I wasn't even supposed to be there. I was supposed to be in class. (laughs) I don't know how Belmont gave him that info, but he called my name up and he was asking me, so you go to Belmont? 
uh, what's your major? What do you want to do? Because he mm -hmm. knew it was a music school, you know. And I was like, well, I'm, I'm studying music business, but I really just want to be the next country singer. And then he was like, oh, let's sing something. I'm going to stand here like, excuse me? What? Put you on the spot. <laughs> um, and I was like, yes. <laughs> so one of my favorite songs by Keith Urban is a song called Without You. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what got into me, but again, Jesus, I don't know what it was, but I was like, yeah, let's sing, let's sing your song without you. And he's like, okay. And we did. And we sang it. And then afterwards he goes, you want to sing that with me at Bridgestone? Mm -hmm. And I was like, yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was pretty awesome. <laughs> So cool how things happen like that too. And you never noticed uh, out there when things are going to just go your way too. talk about some of the, uh, cause everybody who, who moves to the town there, there's so many challenges and so many hoops to jump through. And people say it's a 10 year town and, you know, success doesn't happen overnight. Some of the challenges that you face, uh, you know, I say particularly as this, but it's a great female movement we have now with so many mm -hmm. great females doing well. And with the, the award show coming up next week, I believe it's the Academy of country music awards. Mm -hmm. um, so many cool things happen for so many great females in this movement here, but I know there's still some challenges. Talk about some, some challenges you face as a, as a female country artist. Um, I don't know if I face any different challenges mm -hmm. being a female or not. I haven't really mm -hmm. experienced anything in that regard. I think music in general is just a really hard career to break into. Sure. There's so many multifactorial aspects that go into it. And mental health plays such a huge role in it. And it's so easy to get discouraged, especially in a, mm -hmm. a day where streaming is a huge thing when it wasn't in the early 2000s, you know, or even like TikTok is mm -hmm. like, if your song doesn't go viral on TikTok, the song sucks. And it's like, <laughs> no, your music is still good. So I think the challenges I face are what probably any artist and any artistic role have ever experienced. And that's just the question, is my art good enough? Mm -hmm. But you kind of have to ask yourself, well, is it me? Does this say me? Like, is this song, are these lyrics, do they represent me? Or is this what I love? Because I like to write music that I loved listening to as a child. And for me, I loved, like, I loved, like, the funny, before he cheats, Carrie Underwood, like, kick his yeah. butt, he hurts you, cheats on you kind of songs. I grew up on that. <laughs> I love it. I think it's hilarious and so fun to write about. So for me, I kind of just... I don't know. I just do my own thing. I focus on me mm -hmm. and I make sure that I don't try to mold my sound to fit anything, to fit like a TikTok standard or whatever. You know, I just try to stay true to who I am. And um, mm -hmm. I'm a strong Christian. So my validation and worth comes from God. It doesn't come from other people. So I, don't know, I, just I love got to hear you say that. Yeah, I love to hear you say that, too, because that's how, you know, someone discovers the sound, the type of artist they want to be. The authenticity mm -hmm. is so important now to be authentic and not be somebody else, but be you. And that's the super kind of, the, you know, we'll say superpowers, but that's one of those things you got to really mm -hmm. stay true to yourself and understand what type of artist you want to be, what type of sound you want to put out, the right. importance of picking the right songs. Talk about that. Man, that's hard because, again, you, you still want, you're a brand, you know, like you mm -hmm. want to make sure whatever you're putting out, people are going to love. Like, it's not just about you. Well, I love the song. It's like, well, you got to make sure your listeners love the music, too, without mm -hmm. changing yourself in the process, you know. So it's definitely kind of that hard balance of staying true to yourself, but also making sure you're on brand and people like what they're hearing. Um, but I don't know. I think it's just, it's kind of hard to explain. It's, mm -hmm. it's just, if there's a song that sets your soul on fire, like for me personally, if I just hear something, it could even just be a riff in a song. Yeah. And that for me will like make the song a yes for me, a certain like melody or even the, the storyline. I don't know. It's kind of a little bit of everything. I love it too. And I go back to the first one <clears throat> you guys have put out. I want to go back to the, probably some old school stuff here, but 2019 reload. Let's go there and talk about that one. And then how you really want to see, and everybody says, you know, they, they dabble with music. It's good to just, you know, put something out there to discover the sound. And then over the years they go by, you find that sound, you find what type of artist you want to be. It is, you're right. Hard to explain too, because then you go from that one to Hey Girl and, and talk yeah. about just the, I guess the, succession of singles over the years mm -hmm. and how cool it is to put out the fresh new music but also too ever forgetting you know kind of where you came from on those first two songs right oh my gosh blasts from the past you're taking me down memory <laughs> road right now um, <laughs> so reload was my very first single and mm -hmm. i was so excited to release that i had never even sang in a studio before before i released mm -hmm. that song so that was 
so fun for me. That was actually a song I wrote when I think I was like 16 when I wrote that song. Mm -hmm. And I actually wrote Hush Little Baby around the same time frame, which is funny because Hush Little Baby was like my more recent single. But mm -hmm. I wrote those in like the same time frame, an era of life. And <laughs> which means it was very angry country music era for me. <laughs> like, very uh, clear boyfriend that cheats on you type of era. Makes a good country song, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's country music. Um, but with Claude, I think um, one thing I knew for certain was that I really, really value authentic instrumentation in country mm -hmm. music. For me, the thing that caught my attention before the storyline was the fiddle riffs, the mm -hmm. rolling banjos, the drop D acoustic guitars, the steel guitar, like all of it. That is what really set my soul on fire. And that's how I fell in love with country music to begin with. So I knew I wanted to incorporate those instrumentation like with my new music. And so with Reload, we have like this awesome fiddle intro and it's just so fun. I love it. Mm -hmm. And um, with Hey Girl, I think it, it's similar instrumentation. It's definitely an extremely different song. <laughs> it's Very more different. about, <laughs> yeah, Reload's all about, you know, going after a guy that hurt you. And then Hey Girl's, let's go dancing in the honky tonk. And this guy is <laughs> kind of flirting with me on the dance floor. I'm not into it, but maybe I am, but I'm not <laughs> playing this game. So I think that's just the, and that kind of goes back to your original question of like, mm -hmm. how do you like keeping the brand intact. Cause there's so many sides to us as people, you know, I'm not just a murder country singer, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's so fun to write, but I also love writing about honky tonks mm -hmm. and PBRs and steel guitars. Like I, there's so many sides to you as a person. So as an artist, all that stuff's going to come out. So Hey Girl was my more fun, sassy, but no one gets hurt in this song. <laughs> True, and, and I like this this new single you guys put out uh, March twenty fourth. Uh, Too far gone. Let's have you. Uh, I tell you what. Let's have you play that one. Then we'll come back and talk about it. We'll take a quick time out here too, because I let the conversation get away here on the show. We got to take that break for a time out here for our sponsors mm -hmm. too. But at the same time, I want to have you perform this. And I tell you what, I'll take a break. A lot of the time to adjust their guitars and everything too as well. I know your players are there. I want to introduce them at the same time and uh, really have fun with this uh, this song here too. And also, for everything we're talking about today, guys. Uh, make sure you check out <clears throat> Ash, out there, Ashley Ryan official, uh, dot com for more information on tour dates, merch, things such as that nature. And of course, uh, stream the single wherever you want to uh, stream across all the digital platforms out there for Too Far Gone. We're going to come back, have you play that one too. Quick time out for our friends over at Bangtail Whiskey. We love to drink here and drink responsibly. We do here on the backstage pass, again, powered by the uh, Sports Guys Podcast.com. And here's our friends, Bangtail Whiskey. And of course, uh, Gentle Ben Spirits coming right back. Performances from Ashley. Uh, Ryan, coming up here, hang tight. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host, Kirsty Krause, as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... how they do it the Prosecco process there ricky ford class of 85 gentleben.com and of course go by the tasting room there in alvin texas the vodka the gin the bourbon fantastic i love it so much and uh, don't labor through your drink enjoy it it's smooth and it's out there for gentle ben and uh, love it too as well got to go to an astros game a while back and hit up that gentle ben bar uh don't ask me how they do it but they do it well out there you can make a bunch of cocktails with your favorite uh, drinks and of course our friends at bangtail whiskey and honky tonk texas back here with uh, ashley ryan on the backstage pass the single too far gone across all those uh, digital platforms also check out ashleyryanofficial.com 
for all the tour dates and all the cool stuff out there. One of the most talented uprising artists we've got out there in country music from Cali all the way to Nashville. Hey, it's all yours. Take it away. Thank you. All right. Can't change the roots of my family tree. I never fit in high society. Dinner at the club while table calls. We're having fried catfish with Uncle Jesse's home. That Mercedes would have last 10 minutes in the mud like a 1987 Chevy pickup truck. Mama gave me her mama's hand me down because my mama gave me a half smoke pack of Marlboro's. Ooh, ha, 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 ooh, I'm too far gone. Come on, come on. I ain't no wine drinking, smile faking, spending daddy's money, making everybody around me thinking they be living life all wrong. I'm country to the bone, I'm just that too far gone. Yeah. Too, too, too far gone. Yeah. You like your man dressed up in a three-piece suit will take a Friday night flannel and some square towel boots You're a rooftop bar hop, sugar and lemon drop I'm a PBR sipping to stepping in a honky tonk Ooh, ah, 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 ooh I'm too far gone ah, Come on, come on I ain't no wine drinking, smile making, spending daddy's money making. Everybody around me thinking maybe leaving life all wrong. I'm country to the bone. I'm just not too far gone. Ooh, yeah. I don't care what you might think. I'm proud of what my mama raised. Ooh, ah, 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 ooh. I'm too far gone, come on, come on. I ain't no wine drinking, smile making, spending daddy's money making, everybody around me thinking they be living life all wrong. I'm country to the bone, I'm just a too far gone, yeah. I'm too, too far gone. Yeah, that's something you do. I'm telling you, Larry. Give kudos to you, Larry. That, I can't funny. play that. You can't play that. <laughs> Larry, support yeah. guitar player there too, definitely. And I'm gonna tell you, your music is just so refreshing. It's got this feel good attitude about it too. At the same time, and I love your. We talked about the vocals, the mix, kind of being what type of artist you want to be. And I can see why. Like Nashville is creating that buzz, and like I said, all the major <laughs> publications are getting behind you too. And I'm standing behind you here. On the uh, backstage pass, I love it so much. It's just that new, fresh sound, and we need this from a, the female perspective here in in country music. Hey, there's a couple of more I want to break down here. Uh, Reno, let's go back to 2022. Uh, yeah, fun right. to make, be in the studio. Uh, oh, a good vibe up. with this one too, and I love your your artwork on the single too. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I I felt like such a badass in that. That was that was a fun photo shoot. <laughs> I felt so Texas. I feel great. <laughs> Let's talk about Reno and kind of the songwriting and, and definitely uh, the idea and and I guess a lot of it too. Personal experience from this one? No, actually. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, um, one of my like funniest things I like to tell people is because I think people listen to country music and they hear three chords in the truth. For mm -hmm. me, I you're not going to really hear that. You're going to hear these made up wacky stories of these characters <laughs> I just create. <laughs> Um, no, the song is, is funny because it's about um, a girl that's married to just this this drunk, cheating fool. Mm -hmm. And she's like, you're the reason for Reno. I'm getting a divorce. I'm over this. So no, definitely not based on your story. Never been married. Mm -hmm. But I wrote it with a really, really good friend of mine, Stephanie Joyce. Mm -hmm. She actually came up with the idea of Reno. And I was like, that's so weird. I love it. Let's do it. And right. she's, she's very similar to me with how she writes. So we just connected very easily with um, the sassy female 
getting back at the the man that did us wrong kind of song. So <laughs> we had a lot of fun writing that one and it just came to life in the studio. It was super fun. And I knew I had to put steel guitar on it. That was, it just needed it. It, 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 it did. And that's what I'm saying. You, you brought back a little bit of the, the nineties feel to your music. And that's something out for me, you know, talked to so many great people here on the show who impacted that era. And I was going to ask you, were you a fan of that style of, of music and into the early two thousands? Were there some of the artists that really kind of piqued your interest to, to shape your sound as an artist? Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, what's funny about when I released Reno, that was mm -hmm. when I went through my huge, like Texas country phase. Mm -hmm. I think, um, I think I discovered Cody Johnson from a friend of mine in college. And <laughs> I had this phase I was going through. I was like, I want to be like the female Cody Johnson. Um, <laughs> but I've, I've also in the same respect, I grew up with like Miranda Lambert has always mm -hmm. been a huge influence on my music. Same with like early Carrie and Basically any early 2000s country, Dirks, Bentley, all mm -hmm. of it. I was like, that is like my favorite sound. But at the time of Reno, I was definitely leaning more Texas. So mm -hmm. I guess that was kind of my take on Texas country, even though I'm from California, living in Nashville now. Now I've got a few friends of mine who play out there in Cali. Like I said, you get that feel of kind of, they talk about, you know, obviously John Party being a huge influence, you know, coming from that direction. Yeah. Going to Nashville, having all the success, but I've got a, a good friend of mine, Amanda Kate, out there. She plays really uh, great music out there, too, mm -hmm. and really talks about how the Texas sound is not necessarily different, but it's unlike anything you've heard till you really kind of dive into it, too. And I talk about how, you mm -hmm. know, all the time here about you know, picking the right songs or writing with the right songwriters, because without the songwriters, it, it's so hard to put together the sound out there or the songs themselves. And right. and it's, it's kind of a, a double-edged sword there, too, if you look at it, because it's hard enough to go in the studio and put your vocals on something, but if something is not created from nothing, which is where songs come from, I mean, right. the writing is just as important as the recording, right? Oh, absolutely. Cause I mean, the production can definitely ruin a song. Don't get me wrong. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you got to start with something. You have to have a vision to start mm -hmm. off with, which is funny because sometimes you'll, you'll write the song and then it'll just come out so different from mm -hmm. what you thought it was going to be when you wrote it, hopefully for the better for everyone, but <laughs> sometimes not always, but yeah, it's they definitely go hand in hand, for sure. Thousand. I always commend when I see an artist too out there, an artist being like yourself who loves to write their own stuff and put their own stuff out there too. Of course, I remember one mm -hmm. time somebody mentioned to me in a show we did. It was said, uh, "Hey, George Strait made his career recording other people's songs, not the songs that he wrote. He only had like one number one hit with the one he had out there that he wrote. And he recorded everybody <laughs> else's too, and became the the king of country music too. So you never know." Uh, which direction it's going to come from the cool thing is it's such a great versatile business right now and such oh, yeah. ever changing out there you mentioned the streaming has changed it uh so much there too and it's going to continue i guess to dominate over the next uh, you know like i said probably decade or or, or further uh, into it too as well because many years go by and this this streaming is is so important for you and i know uh speaking of streaming too you actually had a, a cool thing with with tiktok uh get over 12 million views on tiktok um i guess it was with this song uh hush little baby talk about that too did you ever kind of aspire and say it's going to be that much of 12 million, 15 million views or that's crazy. Honestly, I, <laughs> <laughs> it is so weird hearing it out loud. Um, mm -hmm. I will, like I said earlier, I wrote that song when I was like 16 years old. So if you told that 16 year old girl, Hey, this is what's going to happen from your song in like <laughs> eight years. I'd be like, what? <laughs> um, I don't know. To me, that song was kind of something I wrote for myself and I actually mm -hmm. was not planning on cutting it mm -hmm. I my goal was to pitch it to Miranda Lambert actually really okay I can see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. um which I don't even know how I was going to go about that but that was my mindset I'm like Miranda would be awesome on this song which I mean mm -hmm. she doesn't really do music like that anymore but I finally I had all my friends family going why are you pitching this you need to sing this like <laughs> this is yours and I, I was like fine okay so I posted like snippets on TikTok, it did really well. And then we finally cut the song full production and had the music video. And then, yeah, that's when it just blew up on TikTok. Mm -hmm. And I was so overwhelmed by the response because I did not think it would hit so many people, but especially I didn't realize there'd be so many domestic abuse survivors mm -hmm. that would be like, thank you for this song. Yeah. And to me, that really made it special. I thought it was just kind of like this, this crazy out there song, but mm -hmm. it actually meant so much to so many women. And I was very taken aback by that in a great way, of course, but it was just mm -hmm. really heartwarming to know that it affected people that way. 
songs can do that positive yeah. negative ways and turn it back into a positive too because i always have that positive scope looking through that lens too on on so much music too where there's great drinking songs there's also uh songs that help people get through tough times in their life or try to forget about things like that and move on and music is a healing process it is therapy no doubt about it too and that's why i listen to tracks every day i love uh, the appreciation i have for the writers and the recorders out there, the people like Larry that play in the background too, that do their job and do it well. Hey, it's, it's, it's awesome too. Well, I'm going to come back and I got to ask you about Hillbilly because that's, that's a great title. and such a fun song that you did there too with another track that you put your own touch on that had so much fun <laughs> in that one too. Can't wait to hear the backstory of that one. And of oh, course, to have you play uh, one more for us and as always say, it's dealer's choice. So think about that. We'll come back. Uh, time out for our <laughs> friends at Bangtail Whiskey. have been with me for almost four years now. Uh, great whiskey out there too, at least two or three times a week. I make my own cocktail and just enjoy it too, uh, right here in the comfort of my home. Uh, Bangtail.com. Now you can get it online, easyliquor.com. And of course, Total Wine Inspects in Nashville. Hell, we were at Live Oak there during CRS and had our friends at Bangtail Whiskey come out there too as well. Had drinks and, and, and just all the artists were out there having a great time too. So if you get to go somewhere in Nashville, get out to Live Oak. They do a great job out there for those uh, live shows. Also, Honky Talk Texas will be there May 19th with Randall King. And, of course, uh, our Jeff friends at uh, Gentle Ben Spirits out there, if you love to drink even more, uh, vodka, gin, bourbon, uh, sit back, raise a glass with the fine folks over at GentleBen.com. Get your liquor there. Also, Total Wine and Specs, anywhere you can find it in the Houston market out there and at Minute Maid Park with the Astros. We're coming back, back, final segment with Ashley Ryan, including a performance. We're going to ask about Hillbilly and so much more there. The single is Too Far Gone. Cross all the digital platforms and check out Ashley Ryan official.com that's a mouthful i'm gonna let everybody else do the talking now here are our friends at gentle ben and of course bank tell whiskey more with ashley ryan it is the backstage pass uh, powered by the sports guys podcast.com hang tight Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host, Kirsty Kraus, as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. And back here on the show again, Ashley Ryan joining us. The single Too Far Gone is out there too. It's a fresh, exciting sound for country music. Uh, check it out and definitely you won't regret uh, going out there live shows. Ashley Ryan official.com. And she's got another performance for her here on the show and for you viewers and listeners out there uh what are we going to hear I, any single is, is so good i can uh, we are going to hear here we go <laughs> hush little baby don't you cry your mama's got a 12 gauge held up high and if that boy ever breaks your heart I'll send him where the moon meets and kisses the stars. Messing with my baby. And I ain't gonna tell him twice. If you come home crying, kiss a Chevy and these matches goodbye. You coming up gentle. Something like a preacher's daughter. The same can't be said for me. 
thanks to your father Cause I know he's kind of like the back of my hand Just cause he's a male, don't make him a man Hush, little baby, don't you cry Your mama's got a 12-gauge held up high And if that boy ever breaks your heart I'll send out where the moon meets and kisses the stars Count my blessings, count these shells It'll only take one shot to bring him down Better treat you right, cause if he don't, the Lord's gonna call him home. So keep his eyes open, the very last thing he'll see. It's been standing with a shovel, burying a six foot deep. Little baby, don't be scared. I'll lay him next to daddy in the graveyard there. Hush, little baby, don't you cry. Your mama's got a 12 gauge held up high. And if that boy ever breaks your heart, I'll send her where the moon meets and kisses the stars. Count my blessings, count these shells. It'll only take one shot to bring him down. But he'll treat you right, cause if he don't, the Lord's gonna call him home. Oh, the Lord's gonna call him home. Pray to the Lord, my soul to keep. I love her music. I love her music. I'll say it <laughs> <laughs> to the day. I no, my hats ain't gonna fit. Stop it's, it now. Well, it's it's just it's authentic. It's that good. It's fresh. It's new. Uh, country music needs Ashley Ryan in it, no doubt. Hey, tell me the story of. Hillbilly, because this had to be a lot of fun to make. Uh, first of all, great <laughs> performance and great job from Larry on a very popular song there job, uh, that was viral on TikTok for Hush Little Baby. Hillbilly just had to be fun to make, and you just really kind of <laughs> fit that single cover because you feel like you've just like, I feel like you stepped out on stage, won like an, an ACM award because you've got that cowgirl hat <laughs> standing very strong on that particular single cover for Hillbilly, and it's got attitude. Tell me about this song. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that song was so fun. The writing process was actually really funny because I wrote it with um, some friends, um, Ellen Mahler and Eli Gable. And Eli actually came up with the title. Like the hook line was, you're hiking up the wrong hill, Billy. So it's a song about a guy named Billy. <laughs> he told me, to, he literally said it to my face and I was like, Eli, that is so stupid. We're not writing that. <laughs> we finally just i don't know he convinced me we all three of us wrote it and it actually just became a really funny song and i was like mm -hmm. the title's hillbilly we got to make this swampy <laughs> country it needs a banjo it needs fiddle mm -hmm. it needs like a dobro i don't know anything like swampy country so mm -hmm. that's what we did in the production and it, it came out perfectly how yeah. i wanted it to be so it was so yeah. fun just a funny song <laughs> Some, stats, some, some attitude and it had some yeah. good kind of cool i want to say miranda lambert kind of feel to it as well yeah. you put your your touch on on something very very special there too i love it so much thank you to, to finish up a little thing i just do rapid fire so have fun with this and, and kind of throw some uh silly questions out there and some are kind of more i guess important not so silly when it comes to that some more direct uh not doing music for ashley ryan what do you like to do for hobbies or for fun um, well, I do sing about it in some of my songs. I love to go to the honky tonk every weekend. I love dancing. I love mm -hmm. popping the yards and two stepping and all that. Um, I don't get to do it really anymore, but I, I actually used to ride mm -hmm. horses for a little bit. All so right. anytime I'm on a horse, I'm happy. Um, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Music's kind of my life. I, I do music 24 <laughs> seven performing is <laughs> the most fun thing, but Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say probably the honky tonks where you'll find me if I'm not on stage. <laughs> Talk about Grace in some of those stages. Uh, Bluebird, uh, Whiskey Jam, some of great mm -hmm. high, iconic stages in Nashville for you. Uh, I mean, did you ever feel like, one, you're going to step in a circle? And then when you did, 
you just took the opportunity and ran with it. That has to be a dream come true. Yeah, it's like I was saying earlier, like music is just such a, it impacts your mental health so much. You're constantly wondering, am I good enough? Are people actually going to like my music? Like, I think it sounds good, but are other people going to think it sounds good? And I just kind of have to tell myself, you know what? You got this. You have Jesus. You love country music. Do your thing. And if they don't like it, then whatever. That doesn't mean you got to stop doing what you're doing. So for me, I just, I, to have the honor to play like those stages, I just have fun with it. And I'm like, this is awesome. And I just look at it as thank you, God, for this opportunity. Like, this is really fun. So I'm going to enjoy it. I say those words every day for what I get to do here on the show. It's pretty, yeah. pretty amazing too. And I get to listen to great artists like yourself and hear their, see their dreams come true. And I'm, I'm just kind of following that, taking that same wave and riding that wave with you guys too. Tell me about the, you know, the rest of this year. I know that more singles, mm-hmm. more music, uh, as much as you can let the cat out of the bag when it comes to, how excited you are for the rest of 23. I know there's a lot of cool things probably on the horizon, right? Oh yeah. We're actually gearing up to um, do a awesome showcase for William Morris. Oh. So we're really excited to see what comes out of that, but we're doing that um, May 17th. Okay. And so that's kind of like the big thing we're focusing on right now. And I recently signed a record deal with Spinville Entertainment. Congratulations. So I haven't actually announced that on the socials yet, technically. <laughs> but the papers are signed and I'm super excited. I have an amazing team by my side and we're all just really excited to work together. Everyone's just so hardworking and in it for the right reasons. And we all just get along. Personality has a huge impact too. If, you're, mm-hmm. if you have a team and you guys don't like mesh, it's going to affect the the brand you know so i'm just thankful i have an amazing team by my side and just putting out a lot more music um hopefully gearing up for a lot of shows possible radio tour that we've been talking about um more details to come but that's kind of the briefing of everything (laughs) You share them with us. We'll put them out there too. I love the excitement. Love that too. And I'm going to tell you this. I don't like to, she, she probably likes to stay behind the scenes and not put her on the spot, but I'm going to say this speaking on the, the team aspect of things from Elicity PR, you have a great person in Elise Anderson. So if she's listening, yeah, I threw that out there too, just to let her. you know, but I love her so much. And uh, one of my good friends, Avery King used to be there for a while and she's kind of uh, gone off into other future endeavors, but Elise, if you're listening, uh, thank you for finding this true talent. And Ashley Ryan, she's going to take good care of you, too. I'm going to tell you that right now. She's we so- love you, Elise. <laughs> she's a fantastic <laughs> a person. Hey, when it comes to food, what do you like to eat? Oh, that's a good question. I, I like steak. I'm a okay. good <laughs> the medium rare. Medium rare. Medium, I have rare. To, medium rare is the only answer. Every other answer is wrong. Medium rare medium steak. <laughs> steak and taters. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, taters, your country. You said taters. Yes, you're right. That's from Southern California. So I can see taters. I don't know. I like, I like food. I like good food. Good food brings good good people together. And that's what it's about. But if you're asking me what I want, I like a nice glass of wine, Mm -hmm. a nice tab, and a nice medium rare steak and taters. I like that. All right. What about this one here? If you won the lottery tomorrow, Powerball Mega Millions, what's the first thing Ashley would do with the money? Um, savings and invest in real estate (laughs) (laughs) i'm 25 now and i've learned that um, invest Mm -hmm. (laughs) that's the truth i learned that late in the game and i'm glad i did but i did (laughs) diversify the portfolio they always said when it comes down to to doing that too and and don't get me wrong i'll I'll probably put some of it towards (laughs) like a ranch but besides that (laughs) it's going in savings and then I don't yeah. blame you. I don't blame you. Great Let's have fun with this one. Uh, do you remember the first song you ever sang on stage? Oh my gosh. The first song I ever sang. Or the title of it or what it was about. Man, you know what? I think the first song. Wow, that's crazy. I've not I've never thought about that. I I think the first song I've ever really sang was House That Built Me by Miranda okay. Lambert. All right. Like live in front of people, I think that was the first. But I also, my mom loved heart growing up. So Mm -hmm. she made me learn like alone by heart. So I sang that all the time. Yeah. Um, Man, I'll I'll probably go with those two. Something drastically different songs, but (laughs) (laughs) Randall Lever and Heart. (laughs) Something along those lines, no doubt, too. Well, I I love the music so much. Uh, The story is fantastic. I'm so glad you. Uh, move to Music City to follow your dreams. You're doing that so well, and it's just providing a fresh 
just to, so just for me, it's a, it's a fresh a breath of fresh air to country music too as well. It's this new vibe. It's very vivacious. Your personality is great. I love your music and and uh, I love this song too far gone. When I first got it in my press release, I said we had to have her here on the show, and she is um, just bringing so much energy and fresh new sound to country music there ashley ryan official.com and make sure you guys go stream too far gone across all those digital platforms out there get those stream numbers up and get another 12 million on too far gone out there too as well for tiktok and all the cool stuff or more <laughs> keep, uh, keep it counting hey thanks so much for being with me looking forward to connecting again uh, on the show in the future uh when new projects come out thanks to larry for being with us and hope you had a great time yes thank you so much brandon this was so fun i really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me Always, no doubt. Great. Love the sound. Uh, too far gone across all the digital platforms and AshleyRyanOfficial.com. Uh, tomorrow, I'm not sure who's coming on. i got to go back and look at my notes. <laughs> I, know I can tell you, uh, King Calloway, Warren Siders, and a whole lot more here in a few weeks on the Backstage Pass. Some more great shows coming up, too, as well, and a lot still in the works, so stay tuned there. Also, our friend uh, Bronson Arroyo. Uh, he won a World Series ring with the Boston Red Sox here in a couple of weeks. We'll talk some Major League Baseball uh, with him. Get his status on MLB out there, too, as well. That's why we call it Powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Uh, it's a grand slam of sports and music uh, presented by our friends at Bangtail Whiskey, Gentle Ben Spirits, and Honky Tonk Texas. We'll see you guys. And also, too, if you had not checked it out out there, too, yes, we got nominated for the 2023 Josie Music Awards taking place October 22nd yeah. in Nashville, Tennessee at the Grand Ole Opry in the category of podcast media and internet radio for the year 2023. So excited about that. Thanks to everybody at the Josie Music Awards for all their love and devotion and support for what we do here to support artists here on the uh, Backstage Pass. Go stream it, Too Far Gone. I'll be playing it in my car when I go get Mexican food. Tonight's Taco Tuesday. I'm going to go over there to my favorite uh, yeah. <laughs> bar, Mexican place, whatever. Hit it up to as well. And we'll see you guys tomorrow about 4 o'clock here on the show. And uh, check out this. She's got a great website, Ashley Ryan Official. Uh, dot com. We'll see you guys tomorrow here on the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. See you soon.